This section, 5.2, is about limits to growth. And the big concept here is what factors limit population growth. Remember from chapter 4, we talked about something called a limiting nutrient. And what that is, it's insufficient supply of a nutrient. Um, what this does is it reduces primary productivity. This is one example of a limiting factor. What a limiting factor is, it's any factor that causes a population growth to stop. What it's going to do, it's going to limit the size of the population. It's going to keep the population numbers low, otherwise growth would just happen continuously forever and ever. Almost anything can be a limiting factor, and I'm going to give you lots of examples here in the future. But let's start with competition. Competition is a limiting factor because you have many organisms in a very dense population who are competing for lots of different things. So for example, if we had trees, they could be competing for sunlight. Almost any organism competes for space, water, food, nutrients, etc. Preda predation, parasitism, disease, natural disasters are all examples of limiting factors that are going to decrease a population size. So let's talk about what things actually reduce a population size. So as populations increase, you also have competition over the limited resources that are available. Sunlight, food, water. Not all individuals are going to get what they need to survive and they will die. Some individuals will re not receive enough nutrients and they'll still live, but they won't live the quality of life that they would live if they had all the nutrients that they need. The ones that don't get enough nutrients, they might end up dying and that's going to decrease your population size. Another limit to growth is when the number of births decrease and the deaths increase. So with the births decreasing, you have less population, uh, less individuals entering the population. And when you have death increasing, you're going to have more po uh, individuals leaving the population. This is going to cause your overall size of your population to decrease and it's going to limit the growth of that population. What happens here is the population gets smaller. So let's take just a quick example here. Plant roots. And we'll talk about plants. Uh, plant roots, they compete for space in the ground. There's only so much soil, especially in Kodiak. They also compete for nutrients. There's only so many nutrients that go around that are in the soil and water from other plants that are located in that soil. However, taller plants, what they do is they black out sun for shorter plants, so they're competing over the resource of sun. If you go into the understory of Kodiak, especially when you're in a real dense forest, you'll see there's not many plants underneath there because all of the taller, big spruces have taken away all the sunlight for the plants that would usually be in the understory of the forest there. So there's two different types of limiting factors that you have to know. And these cause the populations to decrease. And the first type is density-dependent limiting factors. Density-dependent factors have to do with how dense the population size, i.e., how many individuals you have per, per square unit of space. So 500 people per mile, or 1,000... Uh, trees per an acre. That's a density dependent factor. A number of individuals for a unit area. And then we're going to have density independent factors. And density independent factors are just factors that no matter the size or the density of the population, it's going to affect all members of the population the same. So density dependent limiting factors are a limiting factor that depends on population size. Density dependent limiting factors typically affect populations that are large and dense the most. Let's say, look at human beings. In New York City, there's many humans living together. And if some of these different factors we're going to talk about were to affect humans, they would affect uh, the humans in a very dense population like New York City uh, quite, um, quite more readily. Um, Density-dependent factors become limiting only when the population density, the number of organisms per unit area, reaches a certain level. So basically when the population gets very dense. The three different uh, density-dependent limiting factors are competition, predation, and then you also have parasitism and disease. This picture of these puffins right here, puffins are a species that is affected by density-dependent limiting factors, and the density-dependent limiting factor that they're affected by is space. They don't get enough space, and so this is an example of competition. They're all competing for space, and they're all competing for nesting sites. Uh, in order to reproduce and to 
give their genes into their future generations, they have to have a nesting space. So puffins, uh, they nest in burrows and rocks, and they don't have a whole lot of space in some areas. So this is an example of competition, and they are competing for, obviously, food, water, but nesting spots specifically for these ones right here. Other examples of competition are uh, space, sunlight, and this is only going to be amongst members of the same species. This right here is an example of a predator-prey relationship. A predator prey, so this has to do with predation, which is a part of a density dependent. This right here is a graph of the moose and the wolf populations on Isle Royale in Lake Superior. That's just north of Michigan and just east of Minnesota, one of the Great Lakes. And on this island, what they have is you have a population of moose and you have a population of wolves. The wolves eat the moose. And this is one of the best studies where they looked at a predator-prey relationship over a long period of time. In the circles right here, we have the moose population, and in the straight line, we have the wolf population. And what happens is, is you have this cycle of an increase and decrease in populations of each organism. So let's start here with the moose. Uh, when the moose population is lower, the wolf population is going to be lower, too. Um, and so the wolf, what they tend to, what they do is they eat the moose. And so when the when the moose population starts to increase because of less wolves right here, excuse me, the moose population will increase because there's less wolves. So the moose population will start to increase, increase, increase. So now you have a lot of moose here in 1970. At this point, the wolf population is quite low. So you have quite a bit of food here and not many wolves. So now that there's an abundance of food for the wolves, the wolf population starts to increase. So the wolf population goes up, wolf population goes up. But as that's happening, your moose population is going down. So your wolves have lots of food to eat, lots of food to eat. All their babies have lots of food to eat. And now you have a very, very large wolf population. But what's happened is all of those wolves have eaten many of the moose. So the moose population will start to decrease. So our moose population is going down as our wolf population is quite high. Now if we look here, our moose population is quite low, but our wolf population is quite high. So we have a problem here. and We have a massive decline in wolf population here. The reason it is is because there's not enough food to go around. And so you have many wo wolves dying of starvation or not being born also, which could decrease that population. So now we have a low wolf population and we have a low moose, low moose population. And now, since we don't have a whole lot of predators, the population of moose is going to increase. So from 1984 on up, the moose population is starting to increase. At the very end of the map right, or excuse me, the graph right here in 1995, we still have a low population of wolves, but a very high population of moose. If we were to predict into the future what would happen, we would have the wolf population increasing, 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 eating the abundance of moose there, and then eventually your moose population would decrease. Uh, again, this is an example of a density-dependent